Hello and um, welcome to this Jamb Math Tutorial class presented to you by O3 Schools Jamb app. All right, so um, so of course, as you well know, your O3 Schools Jamb app is an application which you can install on both your phones and your laptops. However, right, with this app, you actually have access to so many different features, which are all very useful. There is one which I particularly love, the question search feature with which you can actually simply search for a question using any tag you like. You could basically search for maybe the name of the topic, something new that gets mentioned a lot in that particular question. And the app simply brings out all questions related to that particular phrase or word which you have searched for. Also, there are places in this app that are well, educative and fun games. Uh, there's also the information section. We are giving information on different schools in the country as well as the courses which they offer and the subject combination which you would require in order to get those courses not just in jam but also the yx subject combination furthermore and as you well know this app has the past questions and more importantly it has it in the cbt format cbt your computer based test jam is now a computer basis and as such this app gives you a platform to practice for jam with this app you're actually able to see how the system would appear the day of your jam so you can actually learn know what to press know not what not to press and actually prepare for jam so that when you get into your venue the day of your jam nothing will be strange or new to you also more importantly as you practice these your tests I try to realize that when you are actually being given your results, it is broken down to you in different segments um, by topic to know which topics you did well at and which topics you failed. So you can actually know which topics you have to go back and read. And also, um, the time management factor is also very important. It shows the breakdown of time, how much time you spent on a particular subject compared to another. So that on that day, you actually know, okay, I need to be faster here. And actually, will practice and be almost perfect before you go to the exam hall. The app has a lot to offer, but these can only be assessed upon activation. And activation costs the simple sum of 2500 naira only. That's the cost for activation key. And within your app, you see the different steps required, or you can actually use that to get your activation key. There are different ways of payment. But as long as payment is completed through any of these methods, it is guaranteed that your app will be activated and you'll be able to access all these features and more, which you can see within the app. So download the other three schools jump back today, activate it, and I'll show you. You would come back to give testimony as to how this app helped you as you prepared for your jam. And now we'll move on to the topic of today, which is integration. Now, integration is the other half of calculus. The other half, which we've done, was differentiation. Now, we're looking at integration. Now, funny enough, differentiation and integration are so related that they seem to be exact opposites of each other. What do I mean? Say, for example, if y equals to 2x, if you differentiate it, that's the y dx, you get 2. But... If you integrate 2 with respect to x using the proper limits, which I'll explain in a minute, you actually go back and get 2x. That means they seem to be opposite of each other. When you differentiate a value, you get something. When you integrate that thing, you get your question back. That means, and please know this symbol is a symbol for your integral. Just like you use d dx when you are differentiating, you use integral with respect to x when integrating with respect to x. And as you remember, just like in differentiation, you don't try to integrate with respect to many different variables. Integrate with respect to k, which now becomes the k, doesn't really matter. However, one special thing about integration is that whenever you solve, there is always a letter that appears in your solving. For example, when you integrate 2x, when you integrate 2 with respect to x, you actually don't just get 2x, 
you get 2x plus k. That k is a constant that comes out with every single integral as long as it's not definite. So if you integrate, you must be getting whatever you have as your normal answer plus some people use k, some use c, it doesn't much matter. But this random letter must follow it out. What's the point of this letter? This letter helps you balance your integration until you put in the definite numbers. You're always integrating within a particular limit. If you remember in differentiation, we had dy dx when x equals to a certain number. In the same way in integration, we have what is called an upper limit and a lower limit. They are written in the form of numbers at the top and bottom of the integral sign. Meaning, you have something like this, integral 5x squared plus 2, upper limit of 2, lower limit of, let's say, minus 1. When you integrate something like this, that is the only time this, your constant, is able to live. If there are no numbers, upper lower limits, if they do not exist, then your answer must carry the letter to symbolize that those have not been used. But once they are used, this letter is actually now able to go away. So please note, a typical question could be, if you integrate x, or let's make it easier, if you integrate 1, what do you get? Option A, x. Option B, x plus c. Please note that these are not the same thing. The answer is definitely x plus c. You must introduce that arbitrary constant. Except... This actually had upper and lower limit, in which case, then the constant doesn't have to come out. But other than that, your constant must be included. So, that's one thing you by integration. And now, just like as we had for differentiation, we also need to have a standard table of integrals, because that would help us out. And please note, integration is actually quite long, but JAMB mostly asks you just the simpler ones. So JAMB has ever reaches into the further parts, because when you go deeper into integration, right, there are different types, there's integration by partial fraction, integration by parts. But we're not going to cover those, or those, sorry, within the scope of this class. Because for JAMB, I'm going to focus on the simpler basic form of integration. So let's see, um, so let's say this is my y or my function f of x, then on the other hand, this will be my integral. Let's start with the simplest. I'm thinking in differentiation, we start with a constant a, and then you said you differentiate a constant, you get zero. However, if you integrate a constant, you get a, then x just appears at the front, plus c. And what you must notice is that when I differentiate this normally, I get this. But now when I integrate this, I get this. So they're kind of opposites. In the same manner, if I integrate um, a, or let's just use x for now. If I integrate x, this is x to the power 1, really, right? Now, here's where the opposite really come into play. So I was differentiating x. We'll say there's power here, 1 here and there's 1 here. 1 times 1 is 1. Then x is power 1 minus 1. And that 1 minus 1 is 0. And x is power 0 is 1. That's why we have 1. However, in integration, we are doing the exact opposite. Which means that instead of subtracting 1 from this, we are going to add 1 to it. And 1 plus 1 gives me 2. And also, instead of multiplying by 1 before I subtract, I'm now going to divide after I have added. So I'm dividing by 2. One more time. In differentiation, before I touch this 1, I'm going to multiply. And then I'll subtract 1. In integration, I'll do the opposite. We are going to add one first, and then instead of multiplying, we are going to divide. Which means in the general form, I'm having ax is power n, and I wanted to integrate this. 
well quite simply that will become ax raised to the power n plus 1 and then I divide by n plus 1 it's that simple all right um what if I had a function let's say um ax plus b or raised to the power n how do I integrate this well in differentiation I will differentiate whatever is here and bring it out and then multiply by this power here before subtracting by one however because now I am integrating I'm going to say ax plus b or raised power n plus 1 over n plus 1 only trick here is that however I'm also going to differentiate what's inside and bring it out. Differentiate ax, I get a. Differentiate b, I get zero. So a comes out times ax plus b is power n plus one over n plus one. Then one more very very important integral that becomes special is in this case of x to the power one. What if it is negative? X to the power minus one. Whereas if I decide to add 1 to it, I'll say x to the power minus 1 plus 1 over minus 1 plus 1. That is x to the power 0 over 0, which is 1 over 0, which as we know is undefined. Is that what is supposed to happen? No. Instead, you should know that integrating x to the power minus 1 gives you the natural logarithm of x. Because if you recall, when I integrate this when i differentiate this rather i get one over x so this is same thing as one over x when i integrate this i get ln x or log to base e of x so these are a couple of my standard integrals and of course we must look at the trigonometric part which um includes see this is still my y and this is integral y so let's start with sine x as before if we differentiate sine we get cos but now if we integrate sine we get negative cos x just i know sine if i integrate cos x i'm now going to get positive sine x okay very very simple and small difference then on the other hand what if there was a the variable in front as before if i integrate sine ax i'm going to get minus cos ax over a and if i integrate cos ax i'm going to get sine ax over a. Oh, which reminds me, I'm sorry, this A should not be at my numerator right here. My A here should be at my denominator. Sorry for that, it's a mishap. It's integration, so we are always dividing, not multiplying. So, this is what I get. And quite simply, yeah, you should know just from previous experience that if I differentiate tan, I get sec squared, which means that if I integrate sec squared x, this is when I would actually get tan x. So these are my, or rather, this is my table of standard integrals. And just like you did for differentiation, you have to memorize these ones as well. So that when we begin to apply them in examples, you'll be able to keep up. So write them out and begin to memorize. Then, next thing we have to look at and actually learn is what about the case we've mentioned of definite integrals? Here you now have a value here. Let's call this u for upper and l for lower. Well, in this case, what you do is that after integrating, you are going to then say integral. Let's say we integrated um, something to the x. Now say integral dx 
whatever you get as your answer so the upper limit and the lower limit and what this simply means is that you are going to put in the upper limit here so whatever you have a function of you replace x for the upper limit first minus what you get when you replace x with the lower limit that is how you deal with having your limits in integration all those values i give to you in your table remember they all ought to have plus c every single one should have plus c your constant all of them the only time that plus c leaves is where you now put in your upper lower limit which like i said is done by simply when you get your answer introduce your upper limit to replace x minus introducing your lower limit to replace x and whatever you get gives you your answer like i said so for integration we're not going to deal with the special method of solving like in differentiation where we have to then product around you know the other rules in integration we're not going to do that we are focusing purely on the simpler ones and so it's time for us to actually practice solving these questions and that means opening our all three schools jam app which we should definitely get and actually looking at these questions so we to start off okay so our very first question sorry let's bring this a little while our first question is brought to us from the year 1997 question 35 this one says if y equals x into x to the power 4 plus x plus 1 we have to evaluate integral from 1 to 0 of y dx now as you can see this one has upper and lower limits and as a result of that the answer would lose the plus c but before we deal with that let's do the normal integration now first of all before i even start look as if they are multiplying each other right so why don't i just take x to open the brackets x times x to the power 4 is x to the power 5 x times x is x squared and x times 1 is x so as a result let's see what's going to happen here integral y becomes integral x to the power 5 plus x squared plus x dx remember we have a limit of 1 and 0 let's see that alone for now if i integrate this what do i get following the standard table which to those that i'm integrating x power n becomes s n plus 1 over n plus 1 meaning that this should become x to the power 5 plus 1 is what 6 over 6 plus 2 plus 1 is 3 over 3 so this should be 6 then 1 is already here so 1 plus 1 is 2 over 2 then this should be to my upper limit of 1 and the lower limit of 0 so what that means is i'm going to put this bracket first of all and say where i see x i'm going to put 1 so 1 to the power 6 over 6 plus 1 to the power 3 over 3 plus 1 to the power 2 over 2 all minus next where i see x i put 0 0 to the power 6 over 6 0 to the power 3 over 3 plus 0 to the power 2 over 2. So you see, this is how you deal with the upper and one limit. Put the upper first minus what you get when you put the lower. Now, this one is quite simple for a reason. These are all 0 over things, and we know 0 over anything must be 0, meaning this bracket goes away at 0. I'm left with just this bracket, which is 1 to the power 6 is 1, obviously. 1 to the power 3 is also 1. And 1 to the power 2 is also 1. So let's forget all the powers and simply add. Well then, my LCM is going to be um, 6. So my LCM is 6. 6 into 6 is 1. 6 into 3 is 2. And 6 into 2 
is 3. 1 plus 2, 3. 3 plus 3, 6 over 6, which gives us 1. And as a result, I can see that my answer is option B. So this integration is simple, almost the same as differentiation, just a different table that you have to learn. Okay. So let's move on to the next question. This time we go to the year 1999. Question number 28. And for this one, I'm integrating the upper limit of 1 and the lower limit of minus 2. And I'm integrating x minus 1 raised power 2 dx. Now, in this case, there are two things we could do. Option 1, simply open your bracket and expand x minus 1 times x minus 1. Then option 2, deal with it without even opening the bracket. Let's try both if we can. Um, first of all, if we open the bracket, that should be x minus 1 times x minus 1, which if we expand, I believe would give you x squared minus 2x plus 1. Which means that as a result, I'm simply finding the integral from 1 to minus 2 of x squared minus 2x plus 1 dx. Let's integrate. Integrate x squared, you get 2 plus 1, 3 over 3. Next, 2x, there's already 1 here. So 1 plus 1 is 2 over 2. Then for this one, integrate it, you simply get x. Then don't forget our limits of 1 and minus 2. But before I go into that, I know this 2 can cancel out this 2. So quite simply, that would give me putting in 1 for the first case, 1 cubed over 3 minus 1 squared plus 1 minus Next term, I'm putting in the lower limit of minus 2, which is minus 2 cubed over 3 minus minus 2 squared plus minus 2. So, over here, 1 cubed is 1 over 3. 1 squared is minus 1 plus 1. Then over here, minus 2 cubed is minus 8 over 3. Minus 2 squared is 4. So this will still be minus 4. Then here, plus times minus is minus. So that's minus 2. Then let's see. Minus 1 minus minus 1 plus 1, sorry, is simply 0. So I'm left with simply 1 over 3 this way. Minus. Over here, 4 minus 2 is 2. I'm going to be having minus 8 over 3. But not just 4 minus 2, I'm sorry. This is negative 4. Minus 4 minus 2 is minus 6, not 2. Transport, I almost made a mistake there. This is minus 4. Don't forget the minus, minus 2. So it should be minus 6. Leaving me with 1 over 3 minus... Over here, I will need to get the LCM, of course. The LCM is 3. 3 into 3 is 1. 1 times minus 8 is minus 8. 3 into 1 is 3. 3 times 6 is 18. So 1 over 3 minus minus 8 minus 18 is minus 26 over 3. Open the bracket. 1 over 3 minus times minus is plus. This is 26 over 3. And since the denominators are the same, simply pick one and add the numerators, which gives you 27 over 3, which, as you are aware, cancels out to give you 9, which is option C. So you see, integration is very, very easy. But I promise first that I will solve this in two different ways. So let's try the other and see which of the two methods might actually be shorter. Okay, isn't the other method simply means looking at your table, 
then you realize that the other method of integrating something like this is to tell yourself that you have x minus 1 increase your power by 1 that is 2 plus 1 which we all know is 3 and then you also divide by 3 and also differentiate what you have inside differentiating x is simply 1 so that means 1 comes here and your prime is 1 and the y is minus 2 so that means i'll be having x minus 1 cube over 3 a power limit of 1 lower of minus 2. So, using my upper limit first, that will give me 1 minus 1, which is power 3 over 3, minus, minus 2 minus 1, which is my lower limit, which is power 3 over 3. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 to power 3 is also 0. And so this is 0 over 3 minus minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3 raised to power 3 over 3. So 0 over 3 as we are aware is 0. So 0 minus minus 3 to power 3 is minus 27 over 3. And we know that minus 27 over 3 is minus 9. Minus times minus is plus. 0 plus 9 is 9. So you can see either way, we we'll have the same answer. And for this case, actually, this one does seem shorter. So we can move on. Any of the method you choose to use in your exam is entirely up to you. Okay. Now we move on to the year 2000 and now we are looking at question 35. This is our third question. This one is a bit interesting. It asks us to find the integral from pi to 0 of cos squared theta minus 1 over sine squared theta d theta. Now, the first thing you notice is that my variable is no longer being named x. That doesn't mean much. My solving remains exactly the same. What is actually more interesting is that I'm having cos squared theta minus 1 over sine squared theta. Now, you begin to ask yourself, what do I do for division? Because in the beginning of this video, I told us we don't deal with those difficult ones here. So, the what you should think about is, if we don't really deal with the difficult ones in jam, can I stop this from being division? Well, yes, you can. That's what you need to remember. Recall from trigonometry that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. Therefore, if I want to get cos squared theta minus 1, that will mean cos squared theta will remain here. Bring 1 to the left. That's minus 1. And that must mean that what happens, my sine squared theta goes to the right becoming minus sine squared theta. Now, this simple identity is going to help us here. And this is why I say learning trigonometry is extremely important. Because without that, you would not know that this equation can simply reduce to my entire numerator turns into minus sine squared theta over what was the denominator before? Sine squared theta d theta and so they cancel out meaning i'm simply finding the integral of minus one d theta very very simple question now so forgetting the fact that that was difficult it was actually very straightforward and if you find the integral of any constant as you are aware the variable simply pops out which means i will get minus theta as my integral upper limit of pi and the wall of zero. For my upper, where I say theta, I put pi. For my lower, where I say theta, I put zero. Minus and minus is plus. Minus pi plus zero remains minus pi. And when I check my options, that is option D. So you see, the solving steps are very, very simple. But always recall, 
in calculus as in many other topics in maths we make use of trigonometry and as such you must know trigonometry okay up next we'll go to the year 2001 and this time we we'll take a look at question 34 for this one we have been told to find the integral of 2 into 2x minus 3 raised to the power 2 over 3 dx. Now, this one is a bit interesting. Just note that first things first, I'm going to remove this my constant because it has nothing doing in this expression at all. It doesn't have x attached to it at all. So these two will simply come out and watch every other person get integrated. It will simply multiply whatever my answer should be. Also, you notice I have the upper and lower limits, which means I'm not getting the definite integral, but I must have my plus constant at the end of my answer. So how are we to do integrate things like this? From our table, remember, we said if you have something of the sort um, ax plus b to the power n, that the integral should be ax plus b to the power n plus 1, all over a into n plus 1 because when we differentiated inside this bracket we got a and that came to be a denominator as well meaning that in this case using my 2 outside i should be having 2x minus 3 raised to the power 2 over 3 plus 1 all over my a which here is now this 2 would come down into 2 over 3 plus 1. And in this case, I have no power one limit, so I'm not going to attach those. Now let's simply do this 2 over 3 plus 1 addition somewhere else. We know that 2 over 3 plus 1 is over 1. LCM is 3. 3 into 3 here is 2. 3 times 1 here is 3. And that is 5 over 3. Indicating that this will give me 2 open bracket, 2x minus 3 raised to power 5 over 3, all over 2 times 5 over 3. But first off, now this 2 outside simply gets rid of this 2 outside. I am left with 2x minus 3 raised to power 5 over 3. This big over, as we know, is divide dead by 5 over 3 and that is 2x minus 3 raised to the power 5 over 3 divided turns to times 3 over 5 and split taking it to the back for proper arrangement gives me 3 over 5 into 2x minus 3 raised to the power 5 over 3 and that's our answer so simply opening my o3 schools jump app i realize that, that is option a but i almost forgot something important which is that there must be plus k because there is no definite integral so this is option a so i hope you understand the methods always make sure you add your plus k if it is not a definite integral in most questions it would not matter much because all the options would carry plus k but if for any reason they do not, then you have to be careful and choose the one that has plus k. All right. My next question is actually very, very easy. This is from 2002, question 18. And for this one, I'm simply told to evaluate integral of sine 3x dx. As well, where this is simply to spy from your table or at the time of your exam, your table which should have memorized. So you should simply remember that if integrate sine, you must get minus cos. Then this was 3x, which means I'm going to be dividing by 3. And don't forget, plus your constant, k, which means that my answer is option A. What it did was, rather than write it like this, 
know there's an invisible one here. So they took that one over three. They had their cos 3x. Then instead of k, these are constants as c. But there is no difference. The letter doesn't matter. So that is that for this question. Next, in the same 2002, we are simply going to go to question number 20. This one tells me a story. It tells me that if dy dx is equal to 2x minus 3 and y is equal to 3 when x equals 0. I am now to find y in terms of x. Dy dx is this. I am to now find y in terms of x. As you know, y is always going to be the integral of dy dx with respect to x. That means I can get my y by simply integrating 2x minus 3 with respect to x. Let's do that integral. Integrating 2x gives you 2x. This was 1 before, so that becomes 1 plus 1, 2 over 2. Then integrating 3, which was a constant, means you just get an x behind it. Don't forget, plus k. These two cancels 2. So y equals to x squared minus 3x plus k. But you may not be confused and say, in the options, there's no plus k anywhere. That is when we make use of this additional information. We are told that when x is 0, y gives us 3. Which means in this equation, I'm going to substitute and say y becomes 3 and x must become 0. So 0 squared minus 3 times 0 plus k. That means 3 equals to obviously 0 squared is 0, 3 times 0 is 0, plus k. 0 minus 0 is 0, leaving just k here, yeah? meaning k equals 3. And as a result, my proper expression should be x squared minus 3x plus, and instead of k, k is 3. So I put down 3 there, making my answer option c. I do hope you are getting this. This is simply how integration goes. It is very, very easy and straightforward. Okay, our next question, this time from the year 2004, and this is question 48. This one asks me to find the integral from 3 to 1 of x squared minus 1 dx. This is another case of definite integrals. And as such, I do not even have to stress myself much. That simply means I'll be having, let's integrate. Integrate x squared gives you x, 2 plus 1 is 3, over 3, minus integrating 1 gives you x, upper limit 3 and 1. So let's put them in. This will be 3 cubed over 3 minus 3, all minus 1 cubed over 3 minus 1. 3 cubed, as we well know, is 27. 27 over 3 is 9, and 9 minus 3 is 6. I can understand that. 3 cubed, 27 over 3, 9 minus 3 is 6. Minus 1 cubed is 1 over 3 minus 1. So if I decide to just combine everything together, I can have 6 minus times plus minus 1 over 3 minus times minus plus 1. Knowing fully well that 6 plus 1 is 7. So 7 minus 1 over 3 is over 1. LCM is 3. 3 times 7 is 21. 3 into 3 is 1 times 1 is 1. And that is 20 over 3. But my options are all in improper, sorry, missed fraction. So simply divide. 20 to 3 is 6. Remainder 2 
over 3. And that is option B. So you see, very, very easy. And now it's time for us to take one last question. Integration is truly very simple. So, one last question. This one is from the year 2005. And this is question number 41. And again, it's a simple integration. As soon as we to evaluate a parameter of pi over 2 and the of 0 of sine 2x dx. So let's find that, shall we? How do we integrate sine 2x? Integrating sine always gives you minus cos. And then because it is 2x, it becomes 2x all over 2. A parameter of pi over 2, lower of 0. So introducing my upper limit in gives me minus cos 2 times pi over 2, all over 2, minus, minus, don't forget this minus that was here, cos 2 times 0, all over 2. For this first one here, 2 cancels 2. Leaving me with minus cos pi over 2. Then over here, minus times minus is plus. 2 times 0 is 0. So that's cos 0 over 2. Now, you must know again from trigonometry, that if you're having cos pi, that's the same as saying cos 180 in degrees. Because this pi is in radians. That is cos 180 over 2 plus cos 0 over 2 and one more time also from trigonometry what should cos 180 be well you should know that cos 180 if you've forgotten please you cut your cosine graph the cosine graph sort of goes like this meaning that cos 0 is 1 cos 90 is 0 and cos 180 is minus 1 so this will be minus minus 1 over 2 plus, and we can see again, cos 0, 1 over 2. Minus times minus is plus. It is 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2. And obviously, pick your denominators. 1 plus 1 is 2 over 2, which gives me 1. And that is option A. So, I hope this has helped us understand the topic of integration. It is time now for us to try our assignments. As usual, I would also advise you to please go through your O3 Schools Jamba and your mathematics textbooks and find as many questions on integration as possible and solve them. Simply solve these questions to practice and I'll show you you will definitely get better and more comfortable when handling integration. Okay, so our first question here we have to try comes from 1998. Question number 29. Also 1995. Question 31. Then there's the year 2000. Question number 39. Also, 2003, question 39. And then last but not least, 1999, one more time, question 25. So try your hand on these and you can comment how you fared beneath this video. And also let us know your answers, if you're able to solve them or not. And if you can't, we shall endeavor to guide you. So please remember, get your O3 Schools Jam app. To get access to these questions and even more on integration, get your app activated. Also, subscribe to this channel to see more videos. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Atanasius.